Alright, so I got it strung up, tuned up, and cleaned up, ready to go. I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick demo, play through a couple different songs, let you guys hear how these strings sound. And lastly, I'll be leaving some affiliate links down in the description, so if you wanna check out any of the products that I used in this video, the cleaners, the strings, anything, that'll all be in the description. Just keep in mind, I may earn a small commission from it. So let's dive into the demo. All right, so my rhythm playing is clearly a little bit rusty, but that aside, I ended up really liking these strings probably more than I thought I would, to be perfectly honest with you. So tonality-wise, there wasn't a huge difference with these strings when using distortion, but on a clean channel, they definitely had a warmer feel than the previous D'Addario's that I had on this guitar. With that said, I could choke that up to the fact that these are a heavier gauge string and not necessarily the metal cores. So what I really liked about these strings actually had less to do with the fact that they were Headfield Signature and had more to do with the fact that they were a medium gauge. I felt that using a heavier gauge string helped a little with the playability of this guitar. The reason for this is because the Snake Bite is actually a 24.75 scale guitar. So a guitar scale is the distance between the nut and the bridge. The closer that distance, the less tension there is on the strings. A 24.75 scale guitar is considered a shorter scale guitar. Because of this, there's less tension on the strings. This makes the strings a little easier to bend and it makes the tone of the guitar a little softer and warmer. The downside, at least to me, is that you have a little bit more movement in the string when you're chugging on the E. That's where these strings come in and they help kind of compensate for that. So even if you're not gonna spend money for the metal cores, I would tell you to at least consider going to a medium gauge string because I definitely felt like this guitar played better with medium gauge. These strings also held tune really well. I literally strung it up, tuned it up, put it on the wall, came back the next morning, and it was still in tune. It was actually quite surprising for fresh strings. And one other thing I really liked about these strings was they just felt smooth. It didn't really feel like I went up a string gauge. If you're someone like me who tends to play with a lighter gauge string simply because I've got early arthritis from sports when I was younger, it really didn't feel like much of a jump. The only real con to going to these strings had to do with the fact that I went up a gauge on the guitar. It kind of threw off the setup of the guitar and to be fair, that's to be expected and has nothing to do with the brand or type of string I'm putting on there. 
it really had everything to do with the gauge. So expect that if you're going up in a string gauge, your guitar is likely going to need a setup. So at the time of this video, the only way to get these is to buy a pack of three. They're sold roughly around $35, which works out to about $11 and 60 some odd cents a pack. The cool thing is they do throw in the uh, the Headfield tin, which is kind of cool. If you collect this sort of thing, I do. I think it's kind of interesting. You know, there is three sets within that. This is just basically what they look like. So really the only downside is you do have to commit to buying three sets of them. Overall, if you're a Metallica fan like I am and you have a snake bite, I certainly recommend these strings as long as you don't mind paying a little bit more money for them and committing to three sets at a time. If you're on a budget and you're looking to save some coin, the Ernie Ball Power Slinkies would be a great substitute. They can be had for between seven to eight dollars a set. And if you buy them as a pack of three, you can literally get them for half the cost of the metal cores. All right, I'm off to log some much needed playing time. I'll be sure to leave links in the description to everything that I used in the cleaning process. And if you're looking for a how-to video on that cleaning process, be sure to check out this video right here. If you enjoyed the video and you like guitar-related content by now, you guys know what to do. If you have any questions, by all means, leave them in the comments. And as always, thanks for watching.